know this is love causes people to do things they normally would not do. Think about it. When you see a young, a young person that's in love, you ever see it? Um, they call it young love. You know, they can go without eating, right? They can go without sleeping. But you know what? How can they do that normally? They can't. So love causes people to do things that is not normal, all right? Cause people to go and spend a lot of money they normally wouldn't spend. They cause people to look better and feel better and get their hair cut. You know, I, I think like this. If there was no women on the earth, us men, we probably wouldn't even bathe often. Be honest, we wouldn't cut our hair. You know, it's just true. We just, <laughs> because, you know, you ever see it? When a woman comes into a man's life, things get better, right? Especially guys, young guys. You ever been into a single guy's house? You go in his house, it looks like nothing. He got a mattress on the floor. No, no, the, the whole place is just empty. And you look in the refrigerator, there's nothing. But when he has a friend or a, a lady friend come into his life, he dresses different, he smells better. You come into his home, his bed is off the floor, right? He's got a little bit more food in his house. He's got flowers. He's got paintings on the wall. Things just look different because why? Then you say, oh, you can walk into a single man's house and tell if he's in love or not. It's true. You can tell if he has a girlfriend or not. It's true, right? Because love causes you to change. And so for us to really understand love, you got to understand the environment of love. You know that God, when he created, and I'm here going back to Genesis again, that when God created um, the heavens and the earth, everything he created had a purpose. He had a plan for everything. You know, the first day he created day and night. The second day he created sky and the sea. The third day he made the land and the vegetations. The fourth day he hung the stars, the sun, and the moon. The fifth day he made all the fish and the things that swam and the birds in the air. The fifth day he made the animals and people, or Adam, us. So love God has to have an environment. And so for you and I to survive, we have to be rooted in the environment that is in God. What is that environment? What is love? Love is a profoundly tender, affectionate passion for another person or another living thing. You know, I, I tell my girls this. They say, oh, you, you hear people say, and you would never hear this said in Vietnamese, okay? Nobody walks around in Vietnamese and say, I love my shirt. I love my car, right? You know, if, if some, a lot of you here are Vietnamese, or I don't know about other languages, but love, I tell my children, is reserved for a living person, a living thing, a, a, someone you have relationship with. But you know, in English, Oh, you know, you hear people say, I love my car, I love my shirt. But in, in, in Vietnamese, we never say that. We never say we love something that is not living. Right? You don't say that. You don't say that. You say you like. And so love is reserved for a living person. Thing, a living person. You know, love is so powerful that every person that is born, they know automatically, they might not be able to describe it, but they know how to do it. You see that people are always looking for love or looking to give it away. How do you know that you have love? Love is something that you would give away. If you don't give away, you don't love. Think about it. Even people who have animals or dogs and cats, they are trying to convey love to an animal that they can't understand. True? They're trying to convey that love to an animal that don't even, they can't even understand. You know, in the Greek, there are five specific ways that the Greek describes the word love. The first word is a word called epithumia, which means you have the physical love. There's a, a strong, passionate love. 
Okay, that's that physical. You love, you desire. It is the physical love, epithumia. This is the love that when a husband and a wife are in their bedchamber. This is what happens when a husband and wife on their honeymoon night. This is the word that the Greek uses called epithumia. The, the second word, the word called eros. This is what we call the romantic love. You know, when the, the husband takes the, his wife or, or the man takes his girlfriend out and buys her flowers and gets dressed up. That's that romance. They, they would slow dance in, on the beach in the moonlight. That's eros. That's, that's romantic love. Right? This is what the old people say. Oh, I remember the young love. And, and we would just dance on the beach with the moon and no music and we would just talk. That's the romance, you know. That's what we, they make those movies about on Hollywood and you say, oh, that's so romantic, right? That's eros. But there's another kind of love that God talks about in the Greek. It is the word called storge love. It's a sense of belonging. See, here at church, there's what we call storge. You know how you know that storge? Just, just think of it as storage. The word storage and storge. Because that means that you belong. You put all your belongings in storage. Right? And so when you come into a church family, what you are feeling is the storge of love, the safety. You are here, you are safe. My children come here, they are safe. Why? Because they know you and you care for them. Uh, they are treated well. When you come here uh, in church, you should feel that belonging. I belong to a family in church. I belong to, you might not live with me and I might not live with you. You might not live with each other, but when you come, we are belonging because that love of belonging is important. How is that important? Because in the book of Genesis, God said that when he made Adam, he says, it is not good for man to be alone. So it was never God's intention for us to be a lonely Christian. It was never God's intention for us to be at home and just read our Bible and to pray and, and watch uh, uh, preaching on the TV. It was never God's intent. It was God's intention for us to belong to a family. And so that's why it's important that when you are going through things, that you should come to a meeting place with your family. Now, church is beyond what we do here. It, it is relationship. Maybe you have Monday that you meet other people, that you study together. Maybe it's Friday where you meet down somewhere else. Maybe it's Wednesday when you come. It is a sense of belonging that's very important. You know, the fourth thing about that the Greek says is this very word, and it, a city is named after this word in America. It's the word called phileo. It is the friendship love. See, friendship love. There's the friendship. How many here consider me your friend? I got three people raise a hand. Thank you, though. <laughs> right? It is the friendship love. Philadelphia is the city. That, that word Philadelphia is, named, is called the city of brotherly love. It's named after this word. It's phileo. Phileo is the friendship love. See, it's that you and I are friends. God says that I know what? The Bible says that he, I know a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That means Jesus is our friend. You know what Jesus said? He said, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friend. My friend friend. Wow! The king of glory, the one that have raised the, uh, the dead, the one that hung the stars and the moon and everything that we can see and not see, the one that created everything. He doesn't call us his servants. He calls us his friend. Man. You know, that's awesome to me. You know that because there's certain things in our life that we need a friend for. You know that? You ever have a good friend 
that in your good day, they love you. When you're not good, when you're having a bad day, they still love you. You have a friend like that? You don't thank the Lord, right? If you have a friend like that, that means they love you when they're good. They love you when you're bad. They love you when you're pretty. When they love you when you're not pretty. Man, that's love. That, that's a friend love. You know, and, and God bless you if you are married to your friend. You know, that, that means they love you when you're doing real good and they love you. Wow, that's, that, you know, when you're not doing so well. Right? That's, that's God. The last kind of love that the Greek described is the word agape. That word agape, this very word means unconditional love. This word describes God. If you were to say what type of love God is, God, agape is the word that describes the nature and who God is. If you were to describe God's character in one word, it would be love. That means his love is unconditional. That means you cannot earn his love. He loves you no matter what you do or don't do. See, how can we have the environment of love? How can you have love in your life that's unconditional? It means that your environment must be built and be rooted in love. Your life must be planted in the environment of love. See, the tree cannot survive without dirt. That is its environment. The tree cannot survive without sun because it's, it's an environment. You, the tree cannot survive without water because it's in its environment. You and I cannot survive if we're not in the environment of God. If you're not connected to God, if you're not built in God, you and I can never survive. You will live a life of dryness, of loneliness, and you'll be like Scrooge. Bah, humbug. All the time, you're always angry. You're always mad. You know, everything bothers you. Why are you so happy? You ever meet people like that? You have to ask them, are they connected to the ground of love? See, that's why church, coming to church is so important. You know, I'm not talking about churches, but when I'm talking about churches, all of us. That's why being connected to each other is so important. Because when you're not having a good day, it's good that you can plug yourself into somebody that is connected to God. It helps you, right? But if your environment's all messed up, see, it's messed up. You, you know what? They, you see people that grew up in an environment with no love. They're very dry, mean, rough people. And you don't want to talk to them, right? What do people say about children? You want to bring children up in the environment of love, right? Love. Love conquers all. Love will never go away. It will last forever. It is love. Love. How we know this is there's many people that have children, and they provide for them, but the children never feel love from them. And when they never feel love from them, psychologists tells us that they become very insecure, timid. You know, they did an experiment, and they took two different little chimpanzees, monkeys, all right? And what they did was they took one and gave him a wire, uh, uh, like it was like a, a shape of a... A, a, another chimpanzee, but it was all chicken wire, you know, just steel. And then they took one and they made it a shape with chicken wire, but they put carpet and cloth on this thing. And they put those two monkeys together and they find out that the one that was just hugging on the metal grew up very hard and very timid. But the one that had the love and the softness of the carpet, it, was, it grew up nor, more normal. That's why life and love has to be soft. It has to be loving. You know, that's why you see 
Love is always little hearts and, you know, everything is soft and the rose petals soft, right? It's because, why? Love requires us to have, what? Giving, tenderness, love, unconditional. You know, in John 3, 16, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, love gives something. You know, you can give something and not love, but you cannot love and not give. Think about it. You, you can love someone. If you love someone and you say, you know what, I never give them anything, that's not love. Love will automatically force you to give. Right? You know, you know a mother loves her children when the child is sick. You know what, I... I never understood this, but when a mother really loves their child and their child is sick, you know what they would say? I wish I can take their sickness so they can live healthy. That's really love. Wow. Right? But if you don't love someone, you see somebody out there that's sick, you're like, oh, I, don't, I don't care about them. Right? But when you love them, you want to give, to give. So love always give. Look, God is love. You know, the first thing you want to know is the best word that describes God's nature is love. So you and I, for us to have love, for us to grow, for us to thrive, we have to be connected in the environment of God, which is what? Love. A tree cannot survive on the concrete. It doesn't matter how much water you put to it. It's not going to survive. You can put all the sun you want, but if you were to plant that tree on this concrete, it won't survive. See, what, you know what that tells me? You can go to church all you want. You can read all you want about God. People can tell you about the Word of God, and you have all the words. But until you receive love of God, and still you are connected to the love of God, you will never grow. Your head will be full of knowledge, but your heart is dead. True? You know what the Bible says? It says, how do you know that you're my followers, my disciples? He says, how do you know that they're Christians? And the word simply says, by their love one towards another. We cannot say that we are followers of Jesus if we're not willing to love. And love has no loopholes, brothers and sisters. Love cannot be choosy. You have to love because love is a choice. And some people, it's very hard to love them because some people flat out get on your nerve. You know, in tiếng Việt, mình nói là có nhiều người khó thương, họ làm bực mình lắm. Right? But you still got to love them. You might not like what they do, but you got to love them. I'm sure in Spanish they probably got some words too that people irritate you. It's hard to love. But love is not because love, you choose to love. You choose to love. The second thing is every, love, every relationship must begin with God, with love. Okay? You, if, you, if you start a relationship and it's based on money, it's based on power, it's based on fame, it's based on physical whatever, it's not gonna last. Because what? Only love will last because God's word is everlasting. Right? You know, young men, young ladies that's single, if you start out love and you're looking at that young lady or that young man, you say, man, he's so she's so pretty, he's so handsome. Oh, I think I love him. If you base it on that, you're in trouble. Because when he's 40, he might not look as handsome. He might have a lot of wrinkles, okay? He might, he might have a little belly, all right? Think about it. Love has nothing to do with the physical. It has to come from this. And the only way you can love someone truly is you have to be connected with God, to God. 
because he's the environment that grows the love. You know, it's amazing that I've been married for as long as I've been married. And I remember, uh, you hear me say this all the time. You know, I see people that have been married a long time, long time. And, you know, they would say, oh, I love my wife more today than I first married her. And when I was young, I said, but she old. How can you do that? <laughs> right? I was like, wow. But, you know, now that I've been married, going at 18 years this, this year, this May, I could tell you, I love my wife more than I, when I first married her. And <clears throat> I'm getting older. I won't say my wife is getting old. I'm getting older, right? And it's, I, I feel like I grew in love. How can you grow in love? It's because you get connected with God. You stay in God, you begin to grow. Did you know that today I love people that I thought I could never love? You know that? That's a very difficult because love has no loopholes. You can't say, well, because that person don't treat me right, I won't love them. No, love has no loopholes. You might not like what they did, but you still got to love them. You still got to pray for them because God gets you connected. All right? You have family members or, you, you know, it's funny, when I was growing up uh, with my friends in Wisconsin, we would have Christmas and they'd invite me over, you know, and they're always an uncle or an aunt that nobody liked because they're just weird, right? But you know what? They're still family. You still got to love them, right? All of us feel that way, but you still got to love them because love has no loopholes. There's no disclaimer. Well, you only love. Why? God says, love those that hate you. Man, that's hard to do. Okay, that's really, it's easy to love people that love you. Have you ever, it's hard to love people that hate you and talk about you. It's hard to love people that, that did you wrong, right? But the greatest words that Jesus ever spoke on the cross is this. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, right? So love, every relationship must begin with love. Look, I'm not telling you that you like what people do to you. You don't have to like it. But you have to at least say, God, help me so that I can be connected to you. That I can get to a place where I can pray for them. Amen? That's very important. Look at this. Every relationship. Did you know, look, in James 1, 17, it says this. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Did you know that every good and perfect, do you know that not everything that's good is God? Oh, it made you think. Did you know that not everything is good is God? But everything that's God is good. Think about it for a minute. You know, people used to say, but the, the pastor, you know, when you say not everything's good is uh, not God, that's not the Bible. Because it says in James 1, it says that every good thing comes from God above. I said, no, it doesn't say that. It says everything that's good and perfect. It has to be good and it has to be perfect. Because God knows what you need. So everything that's good has to also be perfect if it's from God. Y'all thinking. I can see your mind thinking. See? Everything. See? Not everything that's good is God. But everything that's God is good and it's perfect. How do we know that? How do we, how do we know this? I'll give you an example. You know, I used to be raised as a Buddhist. All right? True? Yes, that's true. And as a Buddhist, we did good things. But it wasn't God thing. Think about it. Live a good life, try to be, treat everybody good, but it wasn't God. Is that right? Just because you do good things don't mean it's a God thing. As a Buddhist, we try to do good things, but it wasn't a God thing. 
See, so not everything that is good, there are things in this life that's good, but if it comes from God, it is a good gift, and it's a perfect gift. That when God gives you something, it's not just good, but it's perfect for you. That means that if you trust God, like me, when I married my wife, I, I don't know, you know, I never in my life thought that she was a good fit for me. You know, being a preacher, I wanted someone who can sing and play music. You know, it would be perfect, right? You want a wife that can sing and play music. But that wasn't perfect for me. It was good. But it's, what is perfect and good only comes from God. Because if God give it to you, it'd be good for you, and it just perfectly for you. He is the environment which all good things begin. Okay? Perfected love must be in God to truly know freedom. Did you know that if you are not free, then you really don't know love? You know, if you feel bound, then that's not love. If you feel fear, that's not love. Look at what it says in 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has been made not perfect in love. You know that love will never torment you. If it torments you, that's not love. Love, it's free. It gives you the freedom to be who you are. You know, in a relationship among friends, if you don't feel free to be who you are, then be careful. In a relationship, if you're not free to be who you are, then be careful. Because God made you the way you are, who you are, accept it. In that, that God gave you your personality. God gave you your thinking. Be who you are. And be free. Be free to use your gift. If there is control where it causes you to fear, then that's not love. You should not be in a relationship where it causes you fear. That's not God. Could you imagine if we worship God and constantly we fear him in that way? Every time we hear God, every time we sin, every time we do something, we're just waiting for him to hammer you. Wow, that's scary. Could you imagine I'm being a father, and I can imagine every time my children come to me, and every time they come to me, they're scared to death that I'm just going to yell and scream and tell them that they're no good? That's not God. Because God is agape. He's unconditional. Think about it, brothers and sisters. If you have fear of being a Christian, then you have not been perfected in love. The last thing I want to leave you with this. The first thing is, love is God. He is the environment that you and I need to be connected to. The second thing is, begin everything with God, that, with love, with unconditional love. You know, when people, when you meet people, don't judge them. You know, I don't care what they did in the past. You know, I remember I have a, a, a friend. He's a pastor now, okay? And my mother know him. He's half Italian and half Vietnamese. And when he was younger, people were in the city he lived. When you just mention his name, people fear. I mean, he was the wor he was a gangster, all right? Like, unbelievable gangster, like, wow. If, if, if you say that you know him and he's your friend, people who are messing with you, they're like, okay. We don't want to mess with him. He's your friend? Yes. Okay? When he walks into a restaurant and people know who he was, the other people start leaving. That's how kind of guy he was. He was a bad dude. All right? And he says that the bad thing was he had the Italian blood in him, so he was like a mafia. Always just, and he was sharing this with me. Right? Well, he went to prison. 
Okay? And you know, he told me that he's been shot, he's been stabbed, right? Just a bad guy. And so when I became his friend, this is many years ago, he got saved. And when you meet him today, you will, if he were to walk in the door, you would see this fine, very well-mannered gentleman. Right? Just, you're like, you used to be a gangster? Really? Bad guy. Like, when I say bad, like really bad guy. And yet God totally changed him. He is the lovingest man. Okay? And you know what? When I became his friend, he, he would say, why do you want to be my friend? And I said, why not? He said, you don't, don't you know about my past? I said, I don't care about that. I don't care about that. See, when people come to the church, when they come into your life, don't, don't allow what you hear. Don't allow what you see. Because what you see might deceive you. You know, I used to have friends that were gangsters. All right? And can I tell you that if you look at them, you think, oh, my gosh. But did you know that if I needed anything, even though I was a Christian, they were not? You know what they tell me? They say, if you need anything, you let me know. One time, I'm going to tell you it's funny. One time, there were people kind of, you know, talking bad about me. And my friends, who were gangsters, they would tell me, say, hey, you want me to take care of it? I said, no, 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 don't, 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 don't take care of it. It's okay. Don't worry. He goes, are, are they picking on you? We'll, we'll take care of it. No, no, really. Don't take care of it. Okay? So when people come into our life, don't judge them. Just love them. The last thing I want to leave you this, you got three minutes. Love fulfills all the law. Did you know that? You know, we live in the New Testament, and I hear this all the time, and I want to teach you something. People say, oh, pastor, we don't live in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the law, right? That's true. We live in the New Testament, which is grace. And he said, now that's grace, you know, I don't have to keep the law and all that. That's true. But let me ask you something. If we live in grace today, and one of the things, one of the commandments in the Bible is the Ten Commandments. It says to honor thy father and the mother. Now that we live in grace, do we not need to honor them? You still do. You know, one of the commandments says thou shalt not kill. So that I'm living in grace, should I be able to kill everybody that I don't like? No. See, we don't do away with the law. But by grace, it helps us to live to the place where we cannot live. It is the separation. It means there's a gap. So see, love takes care of that. Look, go with me here, and I'll explain it to you. Look at what it says in Romans 13. Okay? And verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal. Romans 13.9. You should not bear false witness. You should not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That means if you love your neighbor as yourself, you fulfill all the law. Look at Galatians, okay? 13 or 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, in Galatians 5, 4, uh, 5, 14, you shall love your neighbor as your self. Look at James 2, 18. James 2, 8. I mean, James 2, 8. Okay? If you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. Wow. Look at in Matthew 22, verse 37 through 38. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. 39. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Do you know how you can fulfill the Old Testament in the New Testament? You just love everybody. Look, that doesn't mean you like what they do. But you have to love them. And that's hard to do. It's not easy. Especially when people hate you. Right? You know, there's a, there's a great professor here in Houston. He's a Christian, but he was born a Jew. Well, he's a messi uh, Messianic Jew. Okay? He says, he, because he's a professor here at Rice University, very well known. He says that it's very uncomfortable that people talk about me because I'm in the sciences. He's very, he's in science. He says, but it's nothing compared to people that are being persecuted for the gospel. You know, it's uncomfortable, right? But people talk about you. But it's nothing when you have to go to prison believing in Jesus or being beaten. See? So for us to fulfill the law, you have to what? Love. That's all you got to do. It doesn't mean you, have, you like what they do. Right? There's a lot of things a lot of people do I don't like. But, you know, I still have to love them. I still have to be nice to them. Right? I still have to treat them well. Treat them with respect and honor. You know, don't judge people before anything. You know, nowhere in the Bible did Jesus tell the disciples to do what? Become fishers of what? Men. Did you know he never told us to clean them? I don't read anywhere where Jesus told them to clean the fish. He says, just come catch the fish and bring them to me. You know what? You don't have to worry about cleaning up people. Just love them. Bring them to Jesus. Let Jesus clean them. You never read anywhere it says, I'll make you fishers of men, and when you catch the fish of men, then you bring and you clean them up, and then you bring them to me. No. He never said that you have to clean them. Thank you, Jesus, because I don't like cleaning fish because it's stinky. Right? But nowhere in the Bible did God say, I'll make you fishers of men, and you have to clean them. He said, just catch them. Just bring them. For all of us today, Invite somebody to the church. Do you like it? Yes. Do you want a good church? Yes. Then it starts with me. Say that to yourself. I want a good church, a great church. I want a great church. Then it starts with me. It doesn't start with just Pat. It starts with me. I have to do it. I have to go out and win somebody. Bring them into the environment of love. Bring them into Jesus. Love them and show them that you care. You know that I, I get feedback from people. You know, when the one thing they say about this place? They say, wow, I know why you go there. This place is very welcoming. Wow. Amen. Really? We sit in a restaurant, y'all. Yeah, we love it. It's so welcoming. Amen. Can we all stand?